we have to create the right vibe, you know, the energy and everybody at the organization has to feel so privileged to be here. It's, it's no other way. Thanks for listening to the Purely Arsenal podcast. Please follow us on Twitter at Purely Arsenal FP for all the latest Arsenal podcasts. Welcome to another episode of a Purely Arsenal podcast. I've got two of my regulars with me, Neil Shaw. You see how you doing, Neil? Yeah, I'm not too bad, thank you. Uh, I'm celebrating a another clean sheet. Is that five in a row? First time since 2009. Yeah, yeah, mm, very, very good, it. very good. So someone it's said, I thought they just characterise Arsenal with being quite defensively solid, but at the same time struggling to uh, create chances on a regular basis. They wouldn't character we under the winger years. That was something that was at times unheard of, you know. But I've also, mm. got James Johnson with me. How are you doing, James? Yeah, hello, hello. Everything's good. Yeah, like like you said, five in a row. So five in a row. A bit disappointed in midweek, weren't we? From um, the Palace. I mean, obviously, obviously, a game we expect to win the Palace game. But in in hindsight, you know, looking at it as a whole, maybe as um, you know, the last sort of five games, it's hard to to complain, especially when you were looking before that Chelsea game and all those things in your mind. And we were talking about how many points are we going to get, and I can't see any here, and I'm dreading the West Brom away game and all this kind of stuff. So we've, in fairness, in in terms of that bracket of games, we've come for it with flying colours and yeah. to certainly turn turn a corner to a certain extent. I, um, I feel bad because I can't remember who it is, but I remember someone on Twitter said to us, we'll look back on that Palace game in a couple of weeks' time and go, that's actually a good point. Like, yeah, we might... We they said might. that would be a really good point if you in if, in a couple of weeks' time when you look at it. And I was like, yeah. you know what? They could be right there. Yeah, because they they they're not a side that necessarily going to sort of you know they'll probably end up where they are, but but they are quite a dangerous side away against big teams because the type of yeah. player they got and it's quite they, they, they had the better chances as well. Let's be fair to them. I like, thought the, we the, might have been the, slightly lucky to get the point in a way. Yeah, yeah. the Benteke um, save from Leno was sensational. I know I've completely yeah, the rated him. So yeah, yeah. So fair play. I mean, um, people giving props to Leno yesterday and I was like, look, let's, <laughs> let's be fair. He, done, he didn't have nothing to do. So. I think we've got someone <laughs> yeah. asking for, I think Arthur's asking us to, to compliment Leno and, I, and I'm like, yeah. well, the best compliment I'd give him is he didn't do anything. No, he had we nothing think. to do. They yeah. had four shots in the whole game and I can't remember one of them. Um, I'm sure one was at him and he saved one close mm. range, but but it was, you know, it was a relatively comfortable save, I think. Yeah. Um, but other than that, the old sun lounger and the camels out, I think. You can yeah, and well, it's not what we were saying, no, in the last podcast, we're just in the last podcast, we were saying, you know, we don't want him to be this busy and, and you know, having to s- constantly talk about the goalkeeper as a possible man of the match isn't something we always want. So this is, mm-hmm. this is a great thing for this. So there's your Leno conversation done <laughs> uh we're over with this one's called um a bamiyang fries the magpies um that's referring to newcastle's nickname of course is we're, we're against animal cruelty on here specifically neil who's you know very very well, we're all against it i don't want it bellerin's pr team can be a call you know <laughs> get on it i'll stop i'll stop well, let's get back to the football okay um arsenal newcastle the lineup stop laughing neil. um the, the lineup um great to see martinelli back in the squad because obviously i was saying i was you know hoping it was Max three weeks and it ended up being a week so he's Iron Man Touchwood and um, Cedric in for Niles and Niles was removed from the squad which was really interesting I think we've got a lot to talk about with Cedric because I think um, you know he gave a really um, sort of yeah interesting performance and a lot of people were even picking him out for man of the match and things like that but very involved and then obviously Thomas Party returning so I don't have much to say on the lineup beyond that um, I have one question and I'll go to uh, James for it as I know Neil doesn't love the lineup questions any concerns um, or question marks about the sort of back four? Not concerns, because there'll be five clean sheets and first time since 2009. Is it quite interesting, though, that there's, you know, there's been multiple back fours that have existed um, throughout the season? And I just wonder um, whether... Uh, yeah, well, he's, got a, he's got a bit of a dile- dilemma, James, is basically what I'm saying. He's got a little bit of dilemma is with who partners holding. And what's incredible about that is we never thought we'd be saying it would be holding plus one. He's been terrific, to be fair, and um, and 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 it's it's quite a toss up, isn't it? And fair play to to Luis, who I thought was was quite good again. Didn't have a load to do again, but quite good again. So, what's your thoughts on that and how he's easing Gabriel back in? Yeah, so for me, when it, when it came out, I was 
I was relatively happy uh, apart from obviously I I always believed that he wanted one left footer, one right footer. So I was like, oh, okay, well, he's done it again where he's put the two righties in with um, Holding and Louise. But uh, understood why Bellerin was um, dro- dropped. Niles did make me scratch my head a bit because I was like, well, yeah, he's, he hasn't even made the bench. I was like, okay, okay. And then when they did all the pre-match, um, sadly, I um, over here had the Sky coverage. And although I do like... Uh, Neville and Carragher to an extent, they spent the majority of the pre-match talking about the Liverpool Man United game. And I was like, you know, this is Arsenal Newcastle. So if you can. And that was a dreadful them. advert for the Premier exactly, League. Exactly. It literally was just like, oh, you know, let's make them to argue, clip it up and get it on the YouTube to get even bigger numbers. And Cause they were just having little digs at one another and everything else. It was quite boring to be fair. I was like, can I get some Arsenal and, Newcastle stuff here, please, like analysis and everything else. And then post match, when they actually did it, it was really good. So I'm like, well, what, wh- you know, why didn't you do this pre match and post match so that maybe I can, you know, get relevant content for what um, the people actually want to see? But yeah, Bellerin, like I said, I knew he was going to be dropped. Cedric, it was one of those where I was like, okay, mate, well, you played the other day in the cup game and you didn't take your chance. So let's see what you can do this game. Sensational. Absolutely brilliant this game. So got to give him, you know, got to give him props. But I guess you, you might have a bit more on him later because I saw some of the listeners' questions that come in. And then in terms of David Louise, um, I thought that the game in the cup, apart from obviously some of the chances that he had that were more so on the floor, aerially dealing with Andy Carroll, I thought Louise and uh, Rob Holden especially did really well against him. And he probably looked at it and thought, well, hang on a sec, they might go with a two and they might do Wilson as well, who isn't, you know, as good as Andy Carroll in the air, but he can still hold it up and maybe bring Carroll in. So he thought to himself, do you know what? Maybe I'll put Louise in there with Holden again, just to hope, you know, to stop all that threat there and everything, which it did. They didn't really, like we said a minute ago, they didn't really create anything but um no that like you said with the Niles one in the pre-match um when Arteta did his interview he, he said that that was a footballing decision and uh Danny Ceballos was as well so I think, I think there was some stuff that came out about tight car for Danny Ceballos yeah, which, yeah it was which tight car seems a bit like coronavirus in the team at the moment it's <laughs> spreading through everyone isn't it? yeah <laughs> yeah we, well we all know the Mari conspiracy so I mean I'm like he was in all the videos all week and then he's, oh, no, 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 his calf's still really bad. I'm like, mm, it didn't did, did look too bad when he's running around in training and having a laugh with all the lads and everything. I'm it, like, that's the, that's the, you want to keep that million quid. I'm like. That's after February 1st, we're okay, is it? Yeah, I, I believe it's only for league. So it wouldn't, oh. surprise, it would not surprise me if he played Saturday night. There and then uh, all of a sudden it's like, oh, he's had a recurrence. Uh, in the, <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> I just don't uh, know if it's true how players are accepting of these comments. They must be livid with it if it's true, do you know what I mean? But again, we'll never know, I guess. But um, uh, to yeah. be fair, it's a few days off for him. I don't know, um, you know, I don't know how involved he is in his personal life, what he's got on, but yeah, yeah, it's, don't, it's, easier, uh, though, it's easier to watch it on the telly than it is to looking, play, isn't it? <laughs> he's a good looking chap, to be fair to him. Yeah, he's, he's, yeah, a yeah, he's a good looking chap, Mari. Yeah, um, we've got but, quite um, a few of them, to be fair. <laughs> but yeah, we have actually, yeah, absolutely. But, um, but Neil, it was a cagey affair. I've started to get you know the feel, especially in the first half of um, or, or, or a little bit of the Palace game, but we did create a lot more in fairness to us. I'm re watching the first half now because you know, I was just frustrated because or, or you want to win the game, so it's, the longer it stays nil nil, the more frustrated you get, and you get a bit more, a bit of a not a warped view of it, but just maybe not a, uh, um, an objective view of the game. And uh, we, we created, I felt like a lot came through Aubameyang and it was encouraging, Neil. What do you think of his performance? Because obviously my halftime tweet was take him off and uh, I'm so, obviously looks stupid for tweeting that. But um, but he, he was very involved and, and that's something we've argued that he hasn't been in recent weeks. Or um, and But he was very, very involved. But in the first half, he you know, it was frustrating. He missed some chances. He, the ball got caught under his feet a lot. The ball was with him a lot. We were releasing the ball a lot earlier to him down the left, I felt, from central midfield and fair play to Party and, and Jack for that. I think Party quickens everything up, doesn't he? But, um, you yeah, know, well, overall, um, for Aubameyang, um, you, you, you can't complain. That's what he's, you know, he's doing what he's paid to do. And it, it, I think this could be, I hope, the turning point because it really felt like that first goal might have triggered something. Yeah, I, I think uh, there was echoes of Crystal Palace and that would have been 
what another 90 plus a, a game and a half of frustration really but I thought the difference was um, as you quite rightly said we were we were creating I think chances more so than we did it Palace or against Palace um, and then it was kind of is it going to be just a matter of time that one of those is going to con get converted um, if you speak about Mbappéing there's one particular chance in the first half where actually I think he started from defence um, he helped he helped clear the lines at the defence uh, and I can't remember who he passed it to was it Tierney or I, I, I can't remember it was down the left hand side and he literally just shot up I think it's the one that led to where it kind of was a deflected shot and then um, um, Darlow literally had to kind of twist his oh, body and like save cross, it in the corner. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that that was encouraging because that kind of epitomised that his whole change in this game that he's getting more involved because he actually started the move right from the from the from the back um, and carried it forward. So and, and sorry, sprinted forward to, to to collect the delivery. So seeing that, and then as you said, Jack, a couple of other chances where where you know the the one which. Uh, which uh, he um, uh, hit the crossbar with his foot when he was kind of almost falling over. That was a great move as well by the team. Again, that was another example of how we looked like we were going to change things. Our, our transitions were a lot better. Turnovers were a lot better. I think you're right. Party and Xhaka uh, are complementing each other very well in midfield, in the engine which is making everything move so much faster. And then you've got the people, people like Emil Smith-Rowe, which is who, who, who releases the ball so, so quick. So quick. He's so intelligent with it First as well. First touch is fantastic, that, by the way. Yeah. Unbelievable. And, and that's exactly. And, and that gives that tiny, even if it's just a matter of seconds, but it gives the person receiving from him just that little bit of extra time to steady themselves, have a little more time to think about what they're going to do with the ball that they receive from him, and I and I just feel that the movement because of, because we quickened everything up because Shaka is now playing a bit more forward as well uh, alongside with Party being with that pivot role with him, I just feel that we are going to be creating a lot more, and if Aubameyang certainly has found his uh, scoring boots, you know this this forward line with Saka on the right. We, we could be if everyone stays it you know injury f f free you know well touch wood um it's a potent lineup in the front it really is because because Emerson Smith Rowe is working well with Laka it certainly helped Laka he's transformed in the last few matches because of him and I keep pointing at Smith Rowe but you know for me I think he probably tipped man of the match I mean there was there was three or four contenders I believe but I I, I, th I think he has transformed us such a young player, such a mature head. Um, I, I think it's a good omen. I think it's a good example of what we're going to see going forward. And I'm so pleased for Abami. I mean, I know I've given him pelters recently. For me, more so, I just don't think he should be captain, but I don't, I, it's not going to happen. I think he's going to retain it, at least for this season. Um, but if he's scoring again, I don't care. If he's scoring and it's causing us chances to, to win matches, I don't care. And I think it will turn it around. I think getting the brace has helped as well, you know. I think I think we will we will see a lot more for him. But I think going into the game against um, in the FA Cup, I wonder if he's going to get dropped for Martinelli. It'll be interesting to see. Yeah, to I see mean, you expect some rotation, but obviously it's, it's a really tough game. Southampton have a great season, so. Um, but I just thought um, first, obviously, I think the one you talked about was it basically the the, the off um, Saka's cross, basically, and then he hit the post or almost an open goal, wasn't it, Bamier? But again, just shows, I think it was a right-footed effort from Saka. Again, shows how he can go both ways. Again, Saka, you know, that's why he's so, um, you can't take him out of the right side now because he just offers so much variety to his game. You don't know which way he's going to go. Whereas with William, you can tell his goal is always to kind of basically hit the byline and whip a cross in and he doesn't really want to hold the ball too long. Pepe's the opposite. He wants the ball all the time but always wants to drive inside and Saka's just, I mean, he, he simplifies everything and he makes everything look so easy and he does it with such minimal amount of touches that when you watch him, you're just like, you're just too consistent um, in comparison to two players that are vastly more experienced than yourself. It's just incredible. And I, I don't, I still don't know what the price I, there isn't a price that you can really put on a player that's of that age that's showing that much consistency in a side that is basically ravaged with inconsistencies I, I don't really know what how to put a price on him to be honest and I, I can't see how he can't be talked about he is with us but I'm not sure globally if he's talked amongst the elite young players 
like the Harlands and people like that, but I really can't understand why he wouldn't be. Um, but like you said, I thought um, in the first half, obviously that chance from Aubameyang, yeah, it was kind of, you know, it was a point blank, you know, but it does look like an open goal that he missed and you just don't think it's going to work out for him. He tried a few times to do the cut inside, didn't he, that he's done against them. Um, you know, when last season it was so effective, but it just looks like he was just out of sorts and out of confidence. But um, I agree with you on Smith Rowe. I thought he was, even in the first half where it was cagey and they were sitting back so much, they had no endeavour to go forward at all, did they? But I just felt Smith Rowe was just picking up the ball in key spaces. I think he made four key passes in the game. He's had more creations um, in the Premier League than anyone other than Bruno Fernandes. And that top of the league, man, you were a mid-table team currently. And Smith Rowe has had more, he had four, Four creative uh, chances in this game. Obviously, created Saka's goal. Um, I just thought, yeah, I just thought again, he was fantastic. And um, J- James, just going go back to you. Obviously, went into half time. Really felt. I mean, I felt there was a lot on this game after the Palace game because we're playing catch up still. We want to show that there's something still in this league season. Is it fair though to look at Arteta a little bit and say um, these were the games that we questioned under Arteta? So for the last year, we've said, oh, he's, he's really got us going in the big games, right? He's, 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 he shows that we can compete. We might not win them. We might lose one or two. But he's shown that every game we can compete. And that, that wasn't the case. Um, we're under previous managers for a long time. And you can even say our, our great Arsenal winger towards the end. It really wasn't the case, especially when we went away to him. Um, but it was these games, the home games or, or the games against the lower side oppositions that, you know, uh, with all due respect to them, the Newcastles, the Brightons, the West Broms, um, where they'd sit back and we and we we struggled to 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 do anything and in fairness i mean we created 20 shots in this game created 24 shots i think against west brom away fair amount against brighton in the second half as well um is it fair to say he's, he, he's starting to answer some of those questions um and how much of it is down to arteta and how much of it is down to the fact that he was kind of forced into these um these young guns that are just blowing it up yeah um it's difficult because I, I still think we're in the bottom three, maybe bottom four of um, first half goals at home. So we, we're not getting a full sort of 90 minutes of a performance. We're getting glimpses, but then we're not going the full game. So after half time, I, I, like I said to you earlier, I always believe we probably would break Newcastle down because obviously they are desperate for points. Plus the guy... I, I don't think he makes it this weekend. I think he might be sacked imminently. So the guy was playing for his job pretty much. And I'm like, he's definitely going to try something here. And, you know, we'll touch on the goals in a minute. But um, yeah, I, I think just at half time, he maybe says like up the tempo and everything else. And I think that's a great question again about the kids because you look at that Chelsea game and if the three Brazilians, okay, I know we've got four, but if those three Brazilians maybe didn't do what was rumoured to be done, um, would these lot have got a look in? And that that's, that is an amazing, amazing question. And if it is a case of it was needs must, but look how much it's worked, he can't change it now. He can't change it because, you know, the kids have just steamrolled it. They've absolutely steamrolled it and the numbers aren't lying. And do you know what else um, you're talking about just now with Neil? P- Party, for me, with Granite Xhaka, he allows Emil Smith-Rowe to stay further up because in the last couple of games, Emil Smith-Rowe was sort of coming in collecting the ball and then just sprinting or doing what he normally does. And in the first half... I thought that he veered a bit too much on the left-hand side. I thought he was going a bit too wide for me. And I was like, look, stay more central, you know, stay in that number 10 role, stay more centrally because that's where you're going to do your damage. And um, because they weren't really coming out, but I think it was a case of he kept on doing that Lewis and I can't remember who it was that was playing at the right back for him. He just kept on spinning them every single time. So we thought, no, if I stay out wide, I'm going to get the chances here. And then, Lo and behold, the one that Aubameyang did have that he missed, it all come from Smith Rowe and Saka skin in the, uh, like I said, the Lewis that was on the left-hand side. But, you know, I thought he ve- veered a bit too wide. And then you say as well, Neil, about his relationship with Lacassette. Again, 
like I just mentioned, Lacassette kept on coming back in and then he was played as a number 10 at some point. But yeah, he, he kept coming back deep because he was like, look, I'm not getting any service. I'm not. But he allows Lacassette, just, you, just stay up there. Just stay up there. Do all your damage in the box. And that's exactly what happened second half. The tempo increased and straight away, it's a good glove from Nat Darlo. But Lacassette, that's a typical, that's exactly what I want Lacassette to be doing in the box bang in the box back and it, it was a it was a good glove to be fair because it was it blindsided it like, yeah it looked like a stinger it was a typical what i'd call lack of set in the box sort of shot and um we could have we could have got a goal up then so it's it's getting that consistency all the way through for a 90 minutes you know okay have you noticed james though um this season more than any there's not a lot of sides that are doing it for 90 minutes. No. Have you noticed oh, that? Yeah. Because yeah. of fatigue, and I think like the Liverpool Man U game was ever like like this is the best in theory. This is the best the league has to offer at this current point. Mm. And I was watching it going, yeah, I, I think this is worse than I've seen in a lot of see. And I think a lot of those games exist this season mm. where they just kind of pitter out. And I think yeah. it's down to the league in a way, but. But it's down to the, the scheduling, um, the, the condensedness I mean, the, of the league. The league's always that's that's why the Prem, I think, is the best because it's always been a bit mental. Like, there's always some a result one weekend where you're like, yeah. bloody hell, how did they do that? But this year, it is. I used to have where if you were say you were doing an accumulator, I don't know if you're both betting men, but you'd have, you'd have some that were a given. But now I'm like, I'd never do a Premier League accumulator, I'll do the other leagues. I'd never, t- I'd never touched the prem, especially this year. I'd never touched the prem this year on the accumulator because it's just completely like West Brom. I never would have thought we'd got something out of Wolves the other day, and so it's just it's so topsy turvy in terms of what's going to go on. That's why we're still in it. That's why yeah. we're still going to win the title. And the league, I mean, the league. I mean, I think I think it was Carragher and um, Neville that mentioned you know the league's been won with 98, 99, 100 points in the last few, but it's probably going to win with probably mid 80s this yeah, season it's, it's, you know what i mean that, but it's, it's like who wants it who wants it because you know when 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 them lot down the road beat us they had won it now all of a sudden they're you know they're fifth chelsea who were you know they'd won it bloody earlier than spurs had won it now we're only what is it three or something points off them um liverpool you might you and Michael summed it up right at the start of the year where you went fourth season, James. He went he's you know, the fourth one. He's he's he said the first three you can run and run and run and but he went that fourth one is too high and it look he's you know, playing centre mids as centre backs. Nothing. He's, run, he's run, well, Van Dyke obviously freak injury, but he's run everyone else into the ground. United are there at the moment, but you know, it's 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 like Christmas. They've been right? terrible. Though. Have you watched after, them? Have you, after, have you watched yeah, them? after January the sixth, they've got to come down. I mean, and they could. It's always hard to charge for the United because they, they've won leagues when they've been terrible before. But I watched. Yeah. I've watched them the last ten games. They've been awful, awful. Yeah. I watched almost every game, and I'm like, they are terrible. It, but it, they're it, really effective, at, obviously. Yeah, but it's looking at who wants. For me, I think the side that's slowly just doing the business and seeing what's happening at the moment is City. They're the one who I think Ooh. probably are going to go in there and try and sneak it through, but. Yes, who wants it, you know? And um, like we're going back on Arsenal terms, it is it is building that consistency because, okay, yesterday it was Newcastle, but there are going to be other teams where, you know, that Abamyang chance in the first half, I hate going back to it because obviously he did so well with his two goals. But that reminded me of that sort of middle bad bit of earlier in the year where it was like, we're going to get one or two chances a game and if we don't score them, that's it. That's it. But I think we are creating a lot more now. But there are going to be teams that we play, especially in the next couple of weeks, that ain't going to give Arsenal that much time on the ball. No, no, I do. I, I mean, I don't want to be, uh, I definitely don't want to be overly positive because it would go against the habit of a lifetime. But I think um, I watch this team and I, I keep thinking against bigger teams, that front four is going to be better because they're going to have more room. The other team's going to be going the other way more. And I think we'll transition a lot better with that bigger team, with with this front four, if they're on it. And I think when we play well, Lacazette plays well. And Lacazette, I still think he had a very good game in this game. Like you said, he was almost a trigger for the second half research. That little swivel and hit. And we're like, okay, now it's on. It was pretty much 
one-way traffic from then and we never looked back. Neil, just epitomised the performance. Thomas Partey had um, a higher percentage pass rate than than the pass percentage king in Granite Xhaka. He had 94.7% pass rate. Um, pass less than Granite Xhaka, in fairness. I didn't actually think it was the best game I've seen Thomas Partey play. I thought he was better at United. But... Um, at the same time, you know, he wasn't, he, he's just, um, he makes things look so easy. And I think it was epitomised by the, the goal, really, for, for Aubameyang. It, it just, we've been crying out for a midfielder to do something like that. Play it early, play it quick and, and right into his path. Acres of space for Aubameyang. And it wasn't the only time he did it. Um, I know you're a big fan of Thomas Party, but really encouraging to see him come back and just, just slot right in, isn't it? And encouraging to see um, Jacker and him work together, which is something we've questioned. Well, absolutely. Well, you talk about transition. That goal with Bismarck's transition because, you know, Newcastle in our in our area, in our half. Um, and I think he, he managed to get past two men. It wasn't just about the pass. He got past two players, one at least, one, at least one, and then I think it's two actually. I think it was from memory, and it was a great pass. And it was quick, as you said. It, this is it. The, 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 it's for me what I'm seeing with these players now, because I think we've got a finely tuned, balanced side, especially with Saka right. I think Xhaka and Partey are working well together. I think that is our midfield partnership at the moment, for sure. For sure. I know we've seen some good performances from the other players, but this for me is the partnership because they're big, they're, they're strong players. Both of them are big, strong players. I think because the way Partey is, it's encouraging maybe in a way for Xhaka to almost play forward as well now and be quicker. And if you've got two strong players protecting the back four, who also, let's not forget, I think we've got we've got three, four, maybe even four if you count Louise, four good set the backs now as well. Um, and I've got to mention Rob Holding, I think he's superb. I think he's deserved that contract and I think he was superb again yesterday. So did you, I think did you, what did you, sorry, to, sorry to interrupt you, what did you think of um, in the first half Holding just going through Almer on? Did, do you remember that one? And he kind of yeah. went get up. Yeah. And I, I was a little bit like, don't var it. Do you know what I mean? No, but, um, but he did that but he did, it reminded me of when he did that with Costa. Do you remember? Yeah, and, and like, Mane. Like, do you remember? Yeah, you're well? not getting in my face. You're not yeah. going to beat me. I, I, I've i always said it. I've always liked holding. He reminds me of Tony Adams. He's a very old-fashioned defender. And I know he might not be the prettiest, but he just gets the job done. But, you know, we've we've got Mari as well, who's been sensational. So everything's looking good now. If you've got Shaka and uh, Party doing well in the midfield, and then you've got four, at least four good centre-backs... And I'm counting Lewis here because I think Lewis has done all right, to be fair. Um, it's looking good for us at the moment. So, But that ball, that party released to Aubameyang, it gave Aubameyang the space to do and the time to do what he has, what we've known him, almost like a trademark goal, you know, running down the left and cutting in and scoring a good goal. So, I mean, a lot of people say to me, oh, you miss hit it. And yeah, maybe a little bit. It might not be as clean as the strikes. But the point is it went in. And because it went in, I think that's given him the confidence, hopefully, spearhead another like resurgence from him and maybe you'll start scoring a little bit more regularly now I, I, th I think I think party was essential is it was essential to our team before the season I was crying out for his signature for me he has linked James you were talking about it earlier it's like Lacazette doesn't have to come as far back now you've got that mix with with him and Emil Smith Rowe but Lacazette can stay a little bit where he needs to be Smith Rowe can maybe even run ahead of Lacazette and create mayhem going forward and, and and party is that link and we didn't have that link for so long between the back and the and the front line it was just missing we just didn't have anything no creativity we didn't have we had gaps where who was who was going to be servicing the front line and now we've got party and as I said I think he's influencing Shaka to do the same, same thing so massive massive signing and I think it'll only get better. I don't even think we've seen the best of him yet, Jack. No, and I think we said on the last pod that um, Party coming into this team might take this front four even to another level that we're not seeing. Yeah, and I think from that, just from that goal, um, every player is in their own half when he plays the ball, in our own half other than when he plays the ball. But when Aubameyang hits it, there's four players in the box. You know, so they're flown. Smith Rowe, Saka, and what we, that desire to to 
to get in the box. And we, we moaned about that first three. I would just moan about, you know, the, the want to score and the desire to, to attack. And sort of Arteta alluded to the, the youngster sort of playing with freedom. And it was quite refreshing to hear because there was a lot of arguments from us that the restriction was coming from the manager. And um, it's, it's really refreshing to hear that, you know, he, he's all for that. And even Smith Rowe said at the end of the game that, I, you know, Arteta is, just says to me, just go out and be free and play comfortably and don't get your head down, even if you lose the ball and all this sort of stuff. And, and that, because it, it did feel early on in the season and that's why it's so hard to judge, but it felt it was very, very pinpoint, you know, um, almost talking every pass, the players and all this kind of stuff and um, sort of dictating everything. So that's really, really good. So, like you said, I don't think we've seen it all from part of yet. I'm, I'm really, what I'm more encouraged about is to see how, uh, how he might bring the best out of maybe three, three midfield partners that we, we probably in our hearts maybe don't think are to the level, or certainly not to his level. And I wonder what he can bring. So again, I thought Jacques, other than his once or twice a game fall down and try to win a foul when it isn't one moment um, and I think Tierney had a little bit of a he was just like get up mate and just and he just he was he does it every game I don't know why he does it uh, the ball's at his feet there's no need to fall just keep playing he falls to the floor but other than that I thought Xhaka again since he's come back it was really really solid um, but again you know obviously bigger tougher test to come but, um, but James after that really 1-0 uh, I think we just we you know you know, took the handbrake off as 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 we like to say, and um, the second goal, mate. I mean, I don't really know what to say about the, the, the youngsters, um, other than our, our, you know the consistency. We know we can get it from Saka because I think that we've seen it for for enough time. But Smith Rowe, where do where do you stand with Smith Rowe on um? Yeah, I think he had four key passes. Um, obviously, I think that's three assists in the Premier League in five. And they've all been to Bakayo Saka, I want to say. All of his assists for goals have been to Saka. But obviously, he's created more and more key chances um, than that, that people probably should have put away. Well, Aubameyang had one in the first half that went over to Bar. And, um, I just think, um, again, it, there's a lot of debate out there about whether we should bring in someone this window or not. Obviously, we've seen our superstars sort of go away in the last few days um, so we, we don't have that number 10 officially you know on the books the big star which is fantastic work by the club by the way I don't really well, we do a little sorts transfer window segment at the end but none of us I don't think on this podcast said Kalashnik and Ozil were going to go this window I think we said we maybe hoped to I don't think any of us actually believe they would so that is fair play to the club for getting them off the books because I do think more than anything removing Deadwood and I would say some toxicity is actually going to be a big factor for this group. And even, even Smith Rowe said something, and I, I don't know if I was just reading into it, but he said over the last week or two, we've been, you know, as a group, we've been, you know, bonded so much more and collectively much better uh, in practice. And to me, it was just alluding to, you know, just trimming the squad, but I don't know. And removing players that just know they're not really going to be part of us for the future. But um, Smith, Smith, where do you stand on that debate? Because he's showing, cause, I mean, Palace maybe not, but no one did really. But he's showing consistency. But I still think we need someone in there to really sort of help drive him. But it depends on what type of player we bring in and what level of experience they're at, James. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the same with wanting another goalkeeper. It's if he goes down, who are you putting in there? Because who are you going to put in there that produces that sort of like you like we talked about in the last podcast? Who's got that energy? Who's got that desire? And who's got that kind of numbers out of who's left? Willock? No. Willian? No. I ain't dropping lack of setback in there to be a number ten again. I'm like you need to get, and it's tough to say you need to get a recognised, you know, number ten in this window because. We might, do, you, you never know, we might do a madness. I think it's very bad to take a £120 million loan off the government and then do a madness. But I, I don't know. I really, really don't know. But on, on ter in terms of the goal, uh, you, you, you pulled all the numbers up, so I don't have to. So cheers for that. I, I did get the stats, but you know, you've you done it for me. So thank you. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I appreciate that. Welcome. Um, Welcome. All part yeah, of the service. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, like you said, he's assisted three of Saka's goals this season, and that's the most an English duo's combined before they've both turned twenty-one ever in the Premier in the time of the Premier League. So I'm like them two. I don't know if they've got, 
you know how they say like a twin has like an intrinsic link with i'm not i'm not trying to go that deep they have played a lot at youth level yeah, though, right together yeah but yeah there there is just something there that's a mutual telepathy of right you know he's gonna do this i'm gonna have to be here i'm gonna have to stay because the finish it's a nice little weighted tidy little finish in but the the work beforehand um, I, I said it as well um, about Emil Smith Road the other day when he's on his bike. You know, when, when we were talking about the FA Cup game, he's just sprint, sprint, sprint. And again, it was a, it just exploits the space completely. Exploits every single bit, every blade of grass the guy has. He's doing something on it. You know, we we've had what <laughs> I know the words passengers, but we've had people that for so many years haven't done stuff like that like like it's just nice to watch arsenal with a smile on your face and i think you like it more because they're kids that have come through okay if it was someone that we bought and you know someone it you know if willie and done that kind of run and played that sort of assist you go oh that's fantastic well you know well played willie and you know that's great but when it's someone that's come through the academy you just you just like it that little tiny bit more and there was a there was a period um, where obviously when things were going bad, where I was just like, I don't really resonate with any of these Arsenal players at the moment. Whereas in the nineties and the Invincibles and everything else, I could sort of compare. I, I, I was nowhere near them as footballers, but as like personalities and people, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm a bit, you know, I've got that sort of thing with me in my, you know, I've got that sort of ego in what I'm doing. I've got, but now you have got people like Tierney that's flying. Aubameyang's obviously like Neil you always say when that guy's playing with a smile on his face you know he's you know and um, even though he had the mask on <laughs> because when they sit on the bench now they have to wear the face mask which is totally you know yeah do wear your mask if you're listening unless you're exempt um, <laughs> you, you could see even underneath he's beaming underneath the thing so yeah I, I think he got taken off because he needed to take a shit but <laughs> um, other than that yeah, I thought Bamiyang was great. But no, in terms of that second goal, it's it's like you said, energy, passion, telepathy between the two. And um, you, you can't keep expecting Smith Rowe to do it. I believe, you know, I know we didn't really want to touch on Palace and I, I won't I won't go deep, deep into it, but I believe he was burnt out. I think I think all of them just, you know, especially after playing that extra time against Newcastle as well. And there was a there was a bit of a rest period in there. I just think they were a bit drained. And to keep expecting Emil Smith Rowe to do this every week is going to cost. You know, I, I don't think fans are going to turn on him. I'm not going to go that deep, but um, yeah, there's going to there are going to be games that are going to be reminiscent of Palace. And I just hope and pray people don't get because I, I I think you got to find someone that's sort of similar in profile but you don't have to have them similar in age they can be a bit older you know i'm not saying you know willy type older but you go for about yeah. 20, you know that that 20 24 to 29 sort of age and then yeah i'm not saying buy someone that's an exact duplicate of smith row but someone that's got that sort of accuracy that can pull you up that kind of numbers because uh, and i mean i'm looking at it and i'm like could you do it? Could you do it again with another loanee? I don't know. I don't know. But they're talking like this: go for six months. But again, the thing with the thing with that is, um, I just like like you said, it's the energy and the drive, right? And and even from uh, obviously everyone knows our thoughts or everyone's individual thoughts on this podcast about Mesut Özil, so we don't really need to go into it too much. But mm -hmm. but but his drive. I'm not acting like I've never acted like he's not a talented footballer, right? Because early on, I, you, you, I, I'd be stupid to say Mesut Özil isn't a talented footballer. I've never said that. But what I've said, what he said was, you could see the drop off in terms of the the ability to basically make those runs that Smith Rowe was making all game all game yesterday, and then go beyond it. I mean that second goal he drives with a ball he goes inside outside that's their captain that he does who should have been sent off by the end of the game by the way Lascelles um, but he's done that four or five times in this game just these driving runs directly at the heart of their, their defence and what we've seen in the last few years from our number 10 even if it was Meza Ozil is pass and watch a pass and that's just not that's not a modern day 8-10 anymore anyway so maybe it is a 20 a 28 year old position and if you're not able to keep yeah. that level anymore you can't play there anymore because yeah. that's I mean, what you need football goes in spells you know we, we we had a time where 
it was you need big physical type of players then it become oh you need your intricate tidy players and now there's just so much more emphasis on running and you know width and everything else at the moment and um he did he didn't fit he, did, he just didn't fit in what we're trying to do and where we're going I know a lot of people were like, oh, you know, we're not creating. And when you single out a 350 grand a week footballer to create, I'm like, because we don't, we don't play that football anymore. That's, that is not what Arsenal are trying to do and where Arsenal are trying to go. And Smith Rowe at the moment and Saka, uh, you know, they're epitomising what Arsenal are trying to be and what we're trying to do, As, especially in Arteta's image. And again, like I touched on it earlier, whether he stumbled on it by accident, that's what's working now. And that's what's got to keep going. And um, yeah, going back to your main question, we definitely we definitely need to find somebody else because if he goes down with an injury and, you know, he has got that injury record, let's be fair to him, you know, he's doing all right at the moment, but who are you going to bring? There, ain't, uh, there isn't anyone there that I think can... Pull that, you know. I'm, yeah. For me, I've seen enough of Joe Willock to go. He ain't going to do that. I just, think, I think there's a lot more. I, I, I don't know if he'll do it. I think Willock's better as a number eight anyway. And then again, he ain't really that good as a number eight yeah. either. Let's, you know, I'm, I hate, I hate slinging mud on a player in a way, but. Yeah, I think there might be one or two more surprises this window as well. I just wonder mm. if that if that player comes in because there's not not really a lot of concrete rumours yeah. coming up. Uh, it sounds like we're being priced out, but Norwich want forty to fifty million for that Buendia. Go away. Whatever. I'd rather t- I'd rather t- I'd rather take the high risk low knee than pay forty to fifty million for it. Yeah, okay. And I do rate I do rate Buendia, but not for that price. That's what agree. That'll be interesting because if we can't get the player we want in January, which is very possible in January for the price we want, the loan E will show whether how critical we think this season is. And I, I think actually getting the number 10 in or an 8 in or the, to basically a player to share Smith Rose low will show how much we, we believe there's life in this season, really. And I, I really do. I think if we don't do it, I think that shows that we're not I, really that concerned about making could, Europe could, the lead I this season. See, I could see maybe Ericsson. And, um, maybe. I, I, I think I've, we've got a couple of loanies on the back burner. I think we're trying to do a permanent deal somewhere. And I think if it, if it doesn't happen by the 25th of Jan, you'll start hearing about loan deals, I think. I, 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 I think it, it, something like you, I think something, because I'm trying to understand why the push for removing these players now has happened, right? Why Why right now? Right? Why, we could have just left, waited, for six months more for Ozil, right? Has he, has he really become that toxic? And we wait two years with him being like that. So why the push now to drop or clash neck? Like we just basically settled with them, didn't we, with these players and just try to get them out the door. And I'm thinking we're trying to free up space. Unfortunately, if you look at it and you, you evaluate the squad, we, we still need to free up a bit more space before we bring one in because Smith Rowe and Martinelli are two new players in a way, to, to the, in a way, to the squad, right? And Kalashnak and, and um, sorry, um, Ozil was never part of the squad. Saliba was never part of the squad. Um, so, you, you know, really, when you're looking at it, you've not removed as much from the group as, as, you, as you thought you needed. But again, like you said, I think there's real possibilities that, that the Willock, um, Nelson, slight sort of still slight chance of Eddie, and I think one we might come to, don't think this window, but maybe with, with Niles, um, after, especially if Cedric puts in one or two more performances like that, you, you might actually start to ask the question of even him maybe going out. So that might be a real interest. I think there's a little bit more for us to do in this window still and then obviously the backup goalkeeper which I think is definitely going to happen somewhere along the line whether it's that I like the I watched a training video of that Woodman he looked quite good so we'll come to that but you know, the third goal um Cedric let's talk about Cedric Cedric had uh, 90 touches of the ball which is a hell of a lot for a fullback for a game that's uh, more than Kieran Tierney I think he had eight crosses that's more than Kieran Tierney as well which is good going because we know Tierney can whip across it um i think it's really interesting performance from cedric because i i even tweeted a few days ago he's played six games in the premier league in a year for us i think and i said what are we doing is this just a complete waste of 
finances. Um, and I wasn't necessarily hitting on the quality of play. I was hitting on the amount that he's being used. Um, what's your thoughts on, on, on the right back position? Because we do need an alternative to Bellerin. And I think he provides something different to him, Neil. Yeah, I thought it was a great performance, actually. I mean, some people are touting him for man of the match, and that's that's uh, that's saying something. I could, you know, if it had been a case of where everyone uh, had, hadn't done too well and it had been the same old Arsenal from maybe seven or eight matches ago, then maybe you can think, well, all right, he's probably in the best of the bad bunch. But we had good quality players yesterday, especially in the second half. And then for him to be right up there, that's uh, encouraging. Um, I'm still not... I still don't know what he's going to do with that position. I'm, I'm like, I like you guys. I mean, we've got three potential candidates. What was the reason for not playing Bellerin? Why? It, it, it's, it's for me. I still get this feeling that he's still going to choose Bellerin as his number one. I don't know why, but I've still just got that feeling. It's just, it's nothing but a feeling. No slots, logic or science behind it. But at him. least it gives him. Hmm? He, play, he oh, played. Yeah, with it. He played course, with him. He moved him. He moved him in with him. You know, into his he, house. Yeah, Brett basically yeah. adopted the guy when he was a kid. Yeah. So okay. That's so, why he's. Yeah. That he. It is. He's like his son. He's always going to put. Yeah. Going to put Bellerin in. It. Yeah, but I mean, you you you'd like to think that Arteta's a little bit more smarter than that, and it's for footballing reasons only. Then let's hope so. And you know, going on that performance from Cedric yesterday. You know, I thought he was busier than Tierney. I mean, if, if anything, I thought Tierney looked quiet compared to Cedric yesterday. And that's nice to see because we've always been saying our left side seems to be more accomplished than the right. And to have now, if Cedric is going to start featuring a little bit more on the back of that performance, it's all about taking your chance, isn't it? You get a chance and, and, you, and it's like Emil Smith-Rowe did, whether it be by whatever means it was that he got picked for that Chelsea game. You've got to take that opportunity if, as a player. If you're fighting for a position and you really want to play for a club and you really want to show them how good you are, you take that opportunity. And I thought Cedric hasn't really done that in the future. I know there have been very fleeting chances. But he's never done that before. But yesterday was a revelation. It was like a completely different play. I thought, well, he defended well. He tore down the, down the, 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 the side, you know, down the lines very well. And he put some good crosses in. There wasn't just that one which led to the goal, which I thought was phenomenal, by the way. It, there was another couple of chances as well, which he created. I'm sure, I think he linked up well with Saka on a couple of occasions as well. And that, for me, if he's got a good relationship with someone like Saka, who's playing out of his bloody skin, you know, this can be, a, bodes well to balance up the team, which something we've lacked so desperately in the last few years is balance. And if we've got everything right in all areas of the pitch, you know, that's going to be devastating. So I think he's given the Arteta a little bit of a headache here. And that goal, I mean, it was all him. All right, I know that was still a good finish from, from a bad I was having a little bit of a joke with your brother and he was bantering each other off a little bit. But, you know, I, I've got to say, you know, he, 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 he had the little one-two with Saka and then it was all him after that. And I think he, he created it because I think it was, it was a mispass by the Newcastle player. So fair enough, right? That, that, that was good. But he took really good advantage of that. And it showed that speed as well. And that, and that one-touch passing. And for me, by him going closer to the goal, goal just, just keeping the ball in for, at the byline, literally by a hair's breath, you know, they, they showed a still. It looked like it might be out. But just, just it, he kept it in. But by getting that close to the goal, it literally took the goalkeeper out of play. So it literally freed up the goal. It was like an open goal. And it was, and oh yeah, again, Obama had to finish it well. But it was literally, it was, it was made all for him to do that. So I, I was very, very impressed with Cedric, and I hope that he keeps it up. And I hope he does give Arteta a dilemma because I've always said a good team, although we don't want to be too big in our squad. I think it's useful to have at least two good players in every position if you're going to be challenging for maybe one or two um, trophies or at least trying to get back up the table and become a good uh, a force to be reckoned with again. And I think that is where, just talking about the transfers you were saying earlier, we definitely need someone to help Smith Rowe. We definitely need a backup goalkeeper. Then for me, without question, because if one of those two get injured, we're, we're, we're gonna, might, we might have to fall back again into what we were doing before this resurgence. So I, I think it's great, great that Cedric did what he did yesterday. 
for me. One, and I one think thing, you're going. Sorry, no, I'm going, James. Sorry. Yeah. So one thing I want to just touch on as well to, um, about Cedric. Obviously, yeah, you, you're talking about the crossing and the passing and everything. So he, he had 87 percent on his passing yesterday, which is very good. Very, very good. Continue your cross it so much. Yeah, yeah, and and not just only that, but the main one that I saw and I was like, bloody hell, yeah, that's a fair point. He's um he had three aerials yesterday and he won all three. Bear in mind they were ma- that front four for them were massive. I mean Joe Linton was playing on his side, so he was playing left. Joe Linton was playing left wing. That's a guy that was a target man for Hoffenheim. He's playing as a centre forward, but he put him as a on the left hand side. What is Steve uh, Bruce doing, yeah? Well yeah, but he's he's about what, six, six, two, six, three. Uh, Cedric's five eight. And the main aerial that he won was the one that was before the very first goal. He get he he initiated that counter because he 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 done a really good header from I think they had a three kick deep in and they proper overcommitted. They put everybody forward and he headed it out and then it was Lacassette that did the one touch pass and then Party did the Big fire and all, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, little so, chip, yeah, yeah. I mean, if he if he's that good in the air as well, that adds something because you know we've always said Hector Bellerin airily isn't you know, especially when we have on these corner routines we're doing defensively. I see it sometimes, and I'm like, well, Bellerin looks like a mascot with his hand, you know, out like trying to hold. <laughs> he always it's for some reason Bellerin's always got the most massive guy on the pitch that he's meant to be with. I don't know why that <laughs> happens. But and another thing as well is 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 Cedric in the first half had that delivery from the set piece, and I'm like, get this guy on the corners because Saka's awful at him. To oh, be fair, everyone that we've got is awful at him at the moment. Yeah, I'm like, chuck him on him. For God, just, yeah. I mean, at least I think uh, was it his free kick that was the one that Louise had the really bad header from. It he might have been. Might be. I remember the header. Yeah. I don't remember who took it. Free header. Which, yeah, because yeah. I, I, I can't remember if that was the Cedric one from the free kick. Because I'm like, get him, get him on the set plays because he's bloody delivery. That's the one thing I've always said. You know, I'm like, he's got Beckham esque delivery. Just the rest of it's just. Well, Arteta said that last season. He said he's got the best delivery out of all of our fullbacks, and I think he included both sides in that, which is yeah. which is surprising. And then we were like, we were all like, mm, but we I weren't seeing him much. And then um, we obviously know he's quite versatile. I, I wonder if performances like this really indicate that he'll play more, not just because he, you know, he's a good right back, but because he might actually be able to fill in at left back in yeah. a four because. Clearly, Ainsley, mate, and Niles can't really work in a four, mm. certainly not a left back. And maybe Cedric is is, is, is starting to, to become that. So that's where he'll get more game time. I'd be very curious to see if he plays again on Saturday, but maybe not even in the right back position. Maybe he goes over to the left side to give Tierney a break again. Because Possibly. again, you know, we, we can't keep... Yeah. I know he's had a little break, Tierney, but it was more for injury than, than, than rest and recovery. But I, mean, I thought he's quite fast as well, Cedric. I think he looks mm. a lot faster than he appears. Um, I think the goal was evident of that because I don't know how he kept the ball in after a little bit of a heavy touch. But again, even before that, the, the couple of interchanges with Saka um, just showed some real good speed to get beyond their their, their defenders. So, I mean, I've moaned and moaned about Hector Bellerin's lack of pace um, since, you know, he used to be Usain Bolt and then he suddenly turned into um, a ultra marathon runner. Um yet weighs less than one of them and then so I, I'm quite I, I was watching Cedric I was thinking yeah again a little bit more old style kind of right back you know it's simple with the game you know gets it out of his feet and whips it in but but again some nice nice touches very involved on the ball and then I thought it was yeah re- did really well for the goals so I think oh, I'd be curious there because the three if we talk about the transfer window the three areas we're possibly contemplating getting is backup goalkeeper attacking midfielder and backup left back and I personally would eradicate the backup left back, even after Niles' performance, because I just think in my head, risk that one, because there are options there, right? You got Saka, you got Niles, you got Cedric, and they're not perfect options, but they're options. Backup goalkeeper, I don't like the option at all, so that has to happen. Backup attacking midfielder, well, none of us like the options at all either. So those two are the priority, not the backup left back in my eyes anyway. Um, Summer is a different story, and I, I still think Summer will get will will somehow get a right back because I think that whole position will be rejuvenated. But maybe I'm wrong. But um, good to see Party come off after about 65 minutes. That you know suggests that we're we're still easing him back in a little bit. And then um, I think Smithrow came off, um, and we saw a couple of obviously we saw Willian come on. 
Um, and um, I don't know if I did Lacazette out the 90. I think he did see out the 90, Lacazette. Um, and I thought he did, um, did I thought he did, did, did quite well. But um, overall, boys, anything more you want to discuss on the game before we do a few fans' questions and a quick transfer window stuff? Um, just touching on party, it was the uh, he, he had 14 entries into the final third. That's that's another that's another dimension that you know again the guy adds is he, he's going from centre mid and planting that ball into the box, which is something that we've not had. So that that's another one I just wanted to touch on. But no, I I think we've some I, I think we've summed it up. No, I. I... I, I just want to touch on the the relationship between Saka and Emerson Fro. I mean, it, it's there's no secret that there is something very intrinsically good about it uh, on and off the pitch. There's that tele- tele- telepathy, telepathy. I can never say that word. Telepathy between the two of them. And if you notice for that goal when he was running and just before he uh, planted the assist to him. He look. This is where he's mature. He, he's not just running with the ball and running with it really well and travelling with it really well. He's 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 intelligent with it because he looks up. And so he just glances up just before he delivers it. Now I know there's some players where it will just run and run and because they haven't got time, they will just literally plant the ball in and hopefully there's a, another player running onto it. But he's actually looking to find that decisive or an, an incisive pass. And I, that's what I love about him. And, and I think there is something very, very special between the two of them. We've got to protect them. So you're right about, you know, looking for that AM or, or I'd even call it a cover AM because I think he's the main man for me. I think he's the main man because are we really going to find someone who's as energetic as him? I don't know, even if they're accomplished players. And of course, if we get someone from abroad, they've got to find their feet in the Prem as well. Don't forget that. That is the um, issue with the loan, Neil, because mm-hmm. if you do go to the loan route, um, route, sorry, I'm doing American flipping a chain. Um, if you go the loan route, um, Jay, you expect it to be that experienced player, right? The, the, the rumours of the Ericsons and the Iscos, and, and they're coming into play for six months. Do you know what I mean? They're coming into play, otherwise they probably won't make the move anyway. They'll just go somewhere else and play. So oh, that's expected, right? So that's what I don't like necessarily about the loan. I mean, you never know. Maybe we get a loan move that's not a younger profile player of 22 to 26 that's just out of favour for some reason or coming back from injury or whatever, and we take a risk on them. But you expect in your head that, that that's probably where we go with a loan move which is why I prefer the permanent option, which is why I still think we need to make a sale in order to make the permanent option if it's going to be um, this January. So I'm in my head, I'm I'm hoping we make a make a sale of one of the youngsters that we said we, we probably don't believe uh, have had enough chances already and might, might be able to do that or an experienced player, I, but I think it's less likely. I think if you look at it, maybe more so on the Isco side, he will probably be demanding like, no, 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 I want to start. I want, like, I want to start. But if you're looking more at Ericsson, Ericsson don't get a look in whatsoever in a Milan, which baffles me because he bought him. But he's clearly changed his mind. You know, Antonio Conte's clearly changed his mind about him. And got Who does he play instead of him, James? Um, Do you know? Because I, I don't watch it that much, but I'm not trying to yeah. think who they play there. Um, I think it's Nico Barella. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I know they've got him and uh, a two, they, they got Vidal, haven't they, as well? And sometimes he pushes Vidal into a number 10 sometimes. But... Uh, uh. Yeah, it, it's a tough one. It is, it is a tough one. But I, th- I think Ericsson would kindly accept, okay, you know, I'm coming back to where I pre, you know, I, I know the area, it's, you know, I've lived, you know, lived in London, North London, you know, before. Um, so, you know, wife and probably children are going to be happy with that move. Um, and then again, it's one of them where he would probably accept, okay, maybe I might not start every single Premier League game, but, you know, Europa, I think he can still play because I know that it's you can't play in the same competition. So I don't know if Inter used him in the Champions League. I'm not 100% sure on that. But yeah, he can play Europa. So he'll probably go, yes, there's, he five, there's five subs in that. So maybe I'll get a look in that way. I it, Again, it's it's not that I want one to replace Emil smith I hope if people are listening, I, I don't want Emil smith Row dropped. It's just, you know, to expect him to keep doing that time and time again is a lot of pressure on someone with that young of an age and that injury record. Yes, exactly. And we just had a question, and we've had a few, but um, does Cedric start... Oh, sorry, just, um, we had one on the Smith Row from um, 
from Scott Borg uh, at SM underscore Scott um, underscore Borg just threw it into us. Um, give me the form of F- Emil Smith Rowe. Do you still think Arsenal need to sign an established creative player? I think we all agree that we do. Obviously, Neil thinks, you, you know, he's saying, you know, but not someone that restricts Emil Smith Rowe's game time as such and, and someone that, you know, we're still that that position is still very competitive. We don't want a player to come in and automatically takes his starting berth, right? So basically, we, what we don't want is a, is a Willian scenario, right? Basically, we don't want a Willian scenario where he comes in and he takes away the right winger starting berth straight away and basically he's got it until we're forced to change it because that's basically what happens. That's, that's, that's what we don't of what, That's a lot of what's happened with Pepe. If you look, yeah. Pepe, Pepe had his most consistent and most productive run, and you look at the cup final. Was his I'd best say, performance? I'd say Abamyang probably stole the game with his goals. In. But if you were like James, who's your man of the match in terms of performance in the cup? But it was Pepe all day long. Yeah, me. him and Sabias and, were fantastic. And, and the sign of the Williams just made him go sink yeah. right straight down. And um, it, you know, he probably he's probably not going to recover from it which is sad for me and again it's you know it goes into this Arsenal well every time they spend big they F it up and blah 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 blah. it just feeds into that horrible detestable sort of argument that keeps happening and um, yes that's that's not what you know I don't think Smith Rowe would get like that I think Smith Rowe's hungrier I I think obviously you know being an academy product and everything else. He's like, he's not going to want to surrender because he's, he's worked so hard to get it. I yeah, he's been at the club since he was. And he doesn't season. have the price tag either. No, I think that's that's, yeah, that's that's a big big, well, yeah. no, big con as far as Pepe exactly. is from a exactly. from himself from him from yeah. his point. Yeah. I think it's a massive con, massive yeah. pressure. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. then there's um, a lot more. If Smith Rowe makes a mistake a lot more fans are willing to accept it from him. But if Pepe does something wrong, like you said, yeah, with that price tag, he gets slandered for everything. So yeah, rightfully so sometimes. Yeah. 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 He's not, he's not been great, but again, I, th- I think initially this season mismanagement of him was, 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 was the sort of catalyst to, to some of the poor performances we're seeing now, but I expect him to start on Saturday and get another chance. And he's got to start taking one of them to be fair, because Saka's just, um, he's just clear and gone in that right wing position at the moment and um, I hope he stays that way because he's unbelievable but um, but Ade- oh sorry um, he's, uh, Scott Borg also asks if not what do you see as our greatest signing priority he says if we don't so we do think we need a creative player in Scott I still personally think the backup goalkeeper is actually a bigger priority because I, I am sort of getting heart palpitations about something happening to Leno and, and this boy coming in because I don't want to knock him but he, I, he's, he's definitely not ready to come in so I would go the the, the back the safe route is the backup goalkeeper first, and then trying to get the ten in. I think um, so. Yes, yeah, Scott. And then I think those are the only two I'd look at this window. To be honest, I don't think I'd look at a backup left back, which would be the third thing. But I, w- I wouldn't look at it this window. I'd, I'd risk that because I think you can cover it within the squad. And then um, if we do get a ten in, I, I would hope that Willock goes away, goes out, sorry, not goes away, goes out because it, it, there's just no room. There's no room. Surely there's no room at that point. Um, Bernadette just gives us a comment about uh, will we, we will be punished against better teams than Newcastle or Palace if we lack urgency in early early on in recent games. And I, I agree with that. We do seem yeah, to start slowly. Right. Yeah. Bernadette 68 always comes up with some good comments and that's true. I mean, we do have to start games faster. We started fast against Chelsea, didn't we? Obviously West Brom, we flew them away, but you know, um, but we do, we do need to and it's just a one Our Games are so quick and fast and I do go back to, I don't think we've had, I think we've had a, um, a pretty tough run of it over the Christmas period, which is the hardest period for everyone this six weeks. And there's been some teams that have benefited from, um, you know, just games being postponed for, for COVID related reasons. Obviously if it's embedded in, in, you know, through the squad, that's not benefiting from it, but there's some teams, as we know, that have just been the teams that are playing against those teams or, or whatnot, or just happen to have postponed the games and they've got a week off suddenly. And we haven't, we haven't got that at all. Have we, we've not, Come, that's not come round to us. So we've played constantly throughout. I think Villa are four games off us, right? It's just incredible, you know. And obviously they've got to make up those games, but they're going to make up those games where it's a lot quieter, right? Because in this six weeks, there's a game every four days. And I, I think you can't do anything about it, but it's not really an even playing field at that point because there's there's just a lot of, so I don't know, you know, it goes. In, you got you got to handle it. It's a, it's a unique season. So um, please say something nice about Burnley. No, we did already, Arthur. So thank you, Arthur. Um, um, 
Neil, Mark Gunnar, Mark, um, Mark Harrison just got a question for us. At Arsenal's glasses underscore. It's a good question. Hey guys, uh, thank you, Mark. Hey guys, given that the team seems to be stabilising and is looking more consistent, finally, realistically, how high do you think we can finish? Also, given that steady improvement, can we win something this season or is that a bridge too far? Neil, obviously, you're basing this on the fact that the season is already halfway in and we're 10th, not the start of the season where you say quadruple. Thank you, Mark. Uh, was a guest of the show for a long time. Isn't Mathematically it? still possible, son. Well, yeah, with this league, I mean, it's mental, but let's be... Come on. Do you know what? No, all right, let's be, let's be realistic. I'd say f- f- top five. I don't see why not. Look, it, to if, get if, top if, five, if we get... Uh, look, 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 let's, let's just have a look at, look at it. I, I, I think Bernadette makes a great point. We have to play for 90 minutes. That's something we've really struggled to do so long under three or four different managers. I think it kind of started with Wenger, but we just don't seem to be able to play consistently. I'm not saying every game, but consistently we, we either start well and then we switch off or it's the other way around. And sometimes we start playing well when it's too late and it's about seven minutes left. And we think, why don't we do this for like a good part of the game? And that is the key. If we can get that right on paper, if you look at how we set up yesterday and the players that were on that yesterday, it's nothing to say we're not a top five side or even a top four side. I, I, that's just the way I see it. And then if you look at it from, I know, a really dream-like perspective like I do, but what with how many points are we really from the top two or three away? We're not that far. It's not because and the only reason why I say that, if it had been last the season before where we didn't have this COVID and et cetera, and you had the Man Cities and the Liverpools just flying away with it because every single game they played, you couldn't even see them drawing, let alone losing. That was different. You had, you know, two or three teams just on a different level. But I've not seen any one team this season, bar maybe Man City now, that have really taken this uh, the ball by the horns with this title. You know, we're just getting like really weird performances sometimes. You suddenly think, oh, the team's doing well and then they kind of drop off. Seven points off top four. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. There's only a couple of wins and and a couple of draws from from us and two or three losses or a few draws from them. And, you know, we could be back in the mix. I'm going to say top five. I'm going to say top five to answer the question. And I think, I think, I'm not sure. Are we going to be able to have another good cup run? Maybe. Maybe, but I would be really happy with progress. For, to us to even finish top four will be massive progress, even if we don't win a cup. But for me, top five and and maybe a good cup run. That's yeah, what I, I mean. I mean, be. let's be honest. We, I mean, we, we it was last season in the FA Cup. We had a hot, very, very, very difficult run, and you know, for us to get further, the run is extremely difficult. Again, I mean, we played Newcastle in the first round, which some would say was easy. Well, you go and look at who the other teams played because they're, they're playing teams in League, League Two and League Three, and they've got them again in the next round. A lot of the teams we've got. I mean, for us to go forward, we got beat Southampton, and then now we got to beat Wolves and that, that, that's a way as well so I mean it's a it's a it's a really tough run in the FA Cup already and, and Europa League again winning our group comfortably I think we won every game Benfica we got it's not an easy it's not an easy game do you know what I mean so the rounds in anything have not been kind to us in a year where the games are so congested you, you probably would hope for one or two the, easy the rounds or easier rounds out of the Benfica game is that the away game's first so I'm like start get the away goals quick and then just because I always worry more when we play the home leg first oh yeah yeah I, yeah. I, I, like, some... I, like, having, I like having the away game first and then you know what you've got to do when you get back I like yeah. that. that's what I prefer what's your answer to the, to Mark's question uh, realistically how high do you think we can finish at this point James um, I reckon I reckon same as Neil I reckon top 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 five maybe top six I can't mm. I can't see anything further than that I'd say he's a really good achievement. I know that I want to be higher than that and I don't want to settle for just top four and everything else. But I look on current circumstances, I think that's a bloody good achievement, especially for the manager who a couple of weeks ago I was calling for his head. So I, I think if he does yep. so it was if I. he does yeah, if he does get into the top four somehow I think that's a magnificent season for him. But I but in fairness, really I mean um 
in theory, top seven is probably Europa League, unless a yeah. season like last season happens where someone outside the top seven wins the FA Cup. We were outside mm-hmm. the top seven, we won the FA Cup, so seventh got taken away. In theory, fifth, sixth, or seventh is the same thing, right? Yeah. So for me, I think, um, Mark, I, w- I would say realistically top seven. Mm-hmm. And I, I personally would would regard top seven as a, especially, but you shouldn't look at it from the start, but given the start that we had, etc., I would regard top seven as a as a pretty successful season mm-hmm. for Mikel Arteta. Uh, I would also regard anything outside the top seven as failure because I think you have to get in Europe somehow. Yeah. So unless he wins one of the cups, and I just think it's it's a, it's a really difficult run um, in the cups. But um, oh no, no European football at all is failure. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent agree with you. But I look at the next five games because uh, I do because I'm I'm that kind of guy. Is this the league think, games or just don't? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just looking at the next five in the league. And, Go on, um, who we got? At, well, out of fifteen available, I'm like, if you can get eleven, which I think eleven points is doable, I'm like, that's good going. I'm like, Who have we like, got though? That's, Southampton, that's Man United. Game. So it's 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 Southampton, Man United. Uh, so you got Southampton away, obviously. Then you got Man United at home, Wolves away, Aston Villa away, and then Leeds at home. And I'm like, I'm, I'm, in my head, I'm like, that's a le- that's eleven points. If, if from how that's, we're playing and everything at the moment, that's I'm three like, wins and two draws. I'm like, if you can come out of that with eleven. I'm like that's pretty, you know. I think I think we'll beat Man United. I'll I'll, I'll stand here with my chest out. <laughs> I think we'll get. I think we'll beat Man United. Wolves away. I, I'm confident about. And then Leeds at home. I ain't worried about that game either. It's the it's the two Southampton and Villa. They're the ones that I'm like, you know, they're they're the slippy ones for me. I love your confidence. I, I don't I don't fear Man United. I, I know no, I mean, I don't, I don't I know they're, I know they're either, top of the league and everything. I, I ain't yeah. scared of Man United. I ain't scared uh, of Man United. It's going to be a big game, yeah. Wolves at the moment are a bloody mess. And, you know, <laughs> it's, it sounds harsh saying it, but they haven't got a striker. And it, it is sort of somewhat because of, it is because of us, they haven't got one. <laughs> but, you yeah. know, so they're, 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 they're lacking. So I've got no, I've got no qualms about going away to Wolves, but going away to Southampton and Aston Villa, yeah. That that does more so Villa than Southampton, but yeah, that worries me. That yeah, game some might, tough I, games to come. I don't, I don't like the look of that one, but yeah, that's a pretty tough five. Uh, next five, I didn't know. I yeah. didn't know the other three, but um, yeah. So um, let's see how we go. Let's see how we go. I mean, we're all being relatively positive there, I would say. But but let's see how we go. Um, have we turned the corner? Mike Gannon says. I would say, I would say the next two games will really tell us a lot about that. Um, you know, league, league games. You know, Southampton away, United at home. I think if you get if you if you if you're able to get through those and um and, and, and do well in them, and I would say doing well would be well doing very well would be four about points. The league, aren't you? you're not talking yeah, about obviously the FA Cup is is you know a one-off yeah. game and anything can happen. But 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 yeah, in terms of the league, um, I I would say Mike, yeah, we've de- definitely turned the corner. Well, yeah. without doubt we've turned the corner from what we started with this season without question um, but we definitely turned the yeah. corner to say we're, six, we're in with a six chance. points out of them two is massive that'd be I'd be well impressed I'd be really really impressed <laughs> I'd take four to be honest um, yeah oh yeah same, I'd take same. four yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah my, a good question though I mean we definitely said we, we definitely turned the corner from from being you know teetering above the relegation zone now the argument is if we turn the corner to 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 sort of challenge for Europe you know and, and that's a that's a bigger and tougher sort of um, um, road to climb up, I would say, especially after the start we've had. But um, there's a couple more. Neil did. Um, I've got two on Cedric. Does Cedric start ahead of Hector from Nick P81? Always gives us questions. Top man Ash underscore Gallagher, which I think you boys interact with, is a good bloke as well. Says did Cedric do enough to warrant another Premier League start? And at this stage, I prefer Mari for Luis. Um, I'm frustrated that that basically say Luis um, constant three or four touches and a lot of point. In- he says, and he does take a little bit longer to distribute the ball. And I would, I think we all agree that we probably would prefer Mari in there if when Mari is fit. Um, the argument then is, you know, when Gabriel is, is ready and when he will come back in, and we don't know too much about his health status, though he's been part of the squad for the last two games. Does Cedric Neil start ahead of Hector Bellerin for you in the next Premier League game, or do you think it's, you know, we need to see a bit more from him? 
I think so. I think he's done enough to warrant a start. Yeah, why not? It, it, you know, he was he was it was brilliant yesterday. So why not? As far as I'm concerned, I I don't see any reason. You 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 play your best players. That's it. It's as simple as that. And for me, he's done more than Bellerin has done of, done of late. So yeah, I would definitely include him. And that also then it gives that player a little bit of you know confidence and self-belief as well that the manager's got some faith in him so he's rewarded me for doing well and that's what it's all about it's, it's when you play well and then you get dropped for someone else like what was happening with Willian constantly you know he was playing rubbish apart from one game and he just kept getting picked so you, you don't want to do the same thing there and, and I think as I said earlier he linked up well with Saka as well so that could end up being a a nice little relationship. You've got the Saka and Emil Smith Rowe relationship, and then down the wing, you've got the the the, the Cedric and Saka relationship as well. So, that I, I I think yes is the answer to that. And I and also just touching on Mari, it's a it's a good dilemma. It's it's, it's a really good dilemma to have because so I think we, as I said earlier, we've got four good centre backs now. Even Louise, yeah, I think Mari's a little bit quicker, and 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 I think a little bit more kind of decisive at a quicker pace and moves it moves the ball better in that respect or quicker and faster but I think Louis also has got that experience on his side as well I think he's got a little bit of that leadership qualities but then again I, I saw a bit of that from Mari so I think we're spoiled and then what what, what happens with Gabriel because Holding is doing well Mari's doing well it's brilliant Great dilemma, dilemma to have. Yeah, it's, it's, it's odd to, to be looking at our centre backs and, and being, well, feeling like we're spoiled for choice. Obviously, things can change quickly, but again, the, the, the reason we're saying that is five clean sheets in a row is something, you know, we haven't done since 2009. And that's, you know, thanks to, I think that's all been without Gabriel, who was largely well, touted holding, as our player holding, of the season. Before. Hold, holding with all five. <clears throat> yeah, holding's been you know, the, 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 the consistent. So, one throughout the whole season and he's um, not good enough is he he's not a good defender yeah. you know oh i need my defender to get assists and pass nice and score goals yeah you got to start asking them um, what oh, some of these right. players have to do to sort of get a call up to well sorry wenger wenger summed it up about holding the knee yeah. sorry he didn't cost 50 million that's it sums it yeah. up yeah 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 and again like we said we spoke on a contract we said it was a it was a good it was a no-brain he got to do it so um J jerome underscore marks you know says uh, fair play to cedric but do, does that mean we forget all of his performances for us the only thing i'll argue there Drew, I, I haven't seen that many performances from cedric i don't know his number i know in the premier league he's only had seven games he, i think he will, it, pl he will play Saturday. he'll play saturday but he won't I just play the next league one. Better yeah, I, one. I, I think he'll he'll definitely. He's playing this weekend. He'll yeah, play this weekend. I, I just don't know if he'll play left or right because I, I wonder I if he'll know. rest here, any. But I think he will play this I, weekend. Yeah, I don't know. I think he'll. I think he'll play right, and then um, see. It all depends on because I know a lot of people are saying it's a given that it's going to be Southampton. I think if if Shrewsbury pull something off. But aren't they're Shrewsbury like, League Two? Where are Shrewsbury? Yeah, I think they're League One. Okay. And they're quite near. They're quite mid tape but it completely changes what team I think will play. Oh, of course, it, yeah. yeah. I'm just expecting it to be Southampton. With yeah, yeah. I mean, to I mean, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be Southampton as well. But um, yeah, I, I think it will be Cedric, uh, probably holding. Gabriel will probably come back. Um, that well, I, I wonder if he'll get it. This might be a game he rotates holding out for because I'm wondering where yeah, else yeah. will he, you know what I mean? So yeah. I, I think it'll keep, obviously, a more senior squad than what he did against Newcastle. But I think, I think he might do El Nelly and party for this one as well. Yeah, rest Xhaka. Yeah. He might yeah, rest Laka as well mm. uh, or Bamiang because, uh, you know, you've got, you need Martinelli yeah. and Pepe to get in. Um, it was good to see Martinelli come on for 10 minutes. It shows that he's, he's already back in his thoughts again. Yeah. I do feel like really that the 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 lineup is the front four, and then Martinelli's the first one off the off the bench at this point. Um, the way we're playing, and I, I think I think you know Willian and Pepe can you know sh shouldn't be considered before any of that. To be honest, now Willian might come on earlier because I know he thinks he he'll probably start to think he can drop him into the central role of Smith Rose and Pepe. He doesn't seem to do that with, so I expect Willian will probably be. Um, and plus, obviously, he loves Willian in comparison to Pepe, so that'll be a difference. But um, but yeah. So um, thank you, Jerome, for that for your comments. I think we just need to see a little bit more Cedric. Probably, though, I agree he's not been he's been a little bit underwhelming since he's come in. But he's had a lot of 
sort of odd injuries. He broke his nose when he came in. Um, then he had another injury. He was out for a long time, wasn't he, Cedric? He, he, we, we signed him injured, didn't we? And he's he's um, he's had some issues since then. But I'm just trying to see if uh, we got any more questions. I think that's mostly it. So, oh, sorry, my, my, my dad asked one. We have defensively become stronger, true or false? Well, definitely true, I'd say, right? Definitely, I think we'd all agree true. And we were just speaking about a four centre-backs and we're, we're spoiled for choice. It is amazing to think Gabriel was our sort of player of the season. He had a few weeks out and suddenly we, we're not talking about him coming back in. It's, um, it's, it's mental to think that. I do wonder if something more went on there because it, I do feel like Gabriel probably would have come back in today after the Palace's performance. Not that Luis was bad, but there was a lot of argument about him just not moving the ball quick enough and things like that, you know. Um, so I find it a little bit um, strange, but I'm not here to go into any conspiracies too much. Um, boys, Urza is gone. Um, definitely gone. Um, you know, um, I alluded to the fact that he's pretty much signing stuff. He's already flown over to Turkey. You know, he's already looking at his, getting his local doctor in to check on his back spasms, um, all that. But but great for the club and for him to, to get going. Um, let's get... Um, Let's get. Oh, go! I'm going over time. Yeah. Um. Let, let me um get your predictions. So, um, Neil, prediction for Southampton. I think it's a twelve fifteen game. Go ahead. Or Shrewsbury. Oh, or, sorry. Or Shrewsbury. Or Shrewsbury. And um, I want to be respectful. Yeah, you never know. You never, you, know, you never know. You never know. I expect it to be Southampton, but go. Um, on. I mean, I'm back, back, back. It's going to be a tough game. FA Cup games are always a little bit tricky. You never know um, what you're going to get. But um, if if we've harness some confidence from the second half certainly of yesterday I can't see anything other than a win um, and I'm going to go for another clean sheet as well so I'm going to say 2-0 and I think Martinelli I'm praying he plays and I hope he scores really want to see the boy get a goal I think he'll definitely start personally I'm not sure where probably left wing but I think he'll definitely start um, James what's your prediction and your uh, the score sorry yeah, yeah. a score yeah, no, I don't, I don't want to rule Shrewsbury out, but just in case any of their fans come in the car, I mean, if, if we can get sex robots coming in, then we can get Shrewsbury fans coming in. No comment. Nothing, <laughs> is, nothing is forbidden on our podcast comments on YouTube <laughs> by, the, by the looks of things. They I don't seem, know how to, I don't know how to put it on a privacy well. scene. You know, it, all, it all seems to be praise. Yeah, you yeah. Know, Good to see you again, Neil. Yeah, is that coincidental? I don't know. <laughs> maybe, you know. We don't want to talk about conspiracies football-wise. Maybe there's one going on here with robots and <laughs> Mr. Shah there. Um, <laughs> no, uh, I, I, think, I, I think it's probably going to be Southampton. Danny Ying's, I think, still out with coronavirus so oh, that's, that's slightly a bit of a boost but yeah now I'm going to go for a 2-1 and then uh, do you know what I think it might it might be one of the ones that's not normally in their main main time so I'll, I'll go for I'll go for Pepe see if he can maybe come back and do Ooh. something so yeah I'll go 2-1 Pepe Two on Pepe um, okay he probably I'll... won't get a look in or a game but uh, yeah, maybe not. I'll okay. go. Um, I'll go. Uh, I'll go two one in extra time. Extra time, two one. Because it, it, it don't. I mean, it could go to extra time, right? Yeah, you picking the scorer. Um, first scorer. I'll say a uh, first scorer. Gee, I um, party. I'll say party. I'll say party first goal like scorer. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, driving from deep pile driver like Vieira's against Derby you remember that first one smashed it in I was in the, I was in the like back row of the west of the east stand I was Could barely see it underneath I'd, the top of the upper take party doing a Newcastle Vieira one that one was a screen, oh that was it? really that was... top corner 4-0 yeah. or something that one was wasn't yeah that it? was a great goal yeah that was really good that was like early on isn't it 98 mm. wasn't it when we won the league mm. yeah I think so yeah. but um yeah it looks a fantastic play boys thank you so much we're on YouTube um at Purely Arsenal look for us on YouTube at Purely Arsenal so FP on Twitter is where we post all our links. We don't really do a lot on Facebook or Instagram because we uh, we can't bother to. And, uh, <laughs> but we stick on. So just go on Twitter. If you can't find us on Twitter, go on YouTube or just type in purely Arsenal on Spotify or iTunes and things like that. I think or I'll or, or ask the sex robots. They'll yeah. Put, they'll put we've, got, <laughs> we've got 137 reviews on iTunes. We're five star. Um, if you type in Arsenal, we are the third oh. podcast to come up. Uh, yeah, I, didn't, I didn't know they were five star. Yeah, five star. Oh, no, I Apart from my one, that was, it's got a zero. I got a one. <laughs> I delete the bad ones. 
<laughs> it's mainly me going, yeah, really good. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> um, but yeah, if I, so we were for a podcast to come up behind, you know, I think it's, what is his name? Ask Blog, who's very, very um, busy. And then you've got the, uh, the Vision one. And then I think we're, we're after that, you know, we're ahead of the handbrake off on the old oh, I'll take, I'll take that. <laughs> um, and the Tuesday Club, I think it's got a bit more reviews than us, but I think we're, we're, we're right around their zone for crop ups. Though um, we're not as famous as them, so they probably pay for their viewers. Uh, so whatever. But um, it's all good. But yeah, thank you for give us a review on iTunes if you can. I think it'll bump us up a little bit and gets people yeah. tuning us. We're, we're Probably because we don't little... have adverts, mate. I think that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're all yeah. doing the old manscaping, whatever yeah. you know, or whatever it is. Hey, no, you you know, people can look and see that I don't manscape with all this. Man's... <laughs> obviously, do you know? <laughs> amazing it's amazing to hear all these people that work for the athletic going oh, i found my calling with the athletic now buy manscape da, 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 da. I'm like, yeah okay buddy yeah all right calm down a little bit um oh God. We, we don't do adverts because um we don't want to earn any money out of it we're all really really rich so we don't need to yeah right <laughs> okay boys um, we'll be back after the Southampton game Saturday Sunday hopefully thank you to Anthony uh, Palm who always edits um, Michael Harris will hopefully be on the next one if we can get him on and I'll let you boys go up the Arsenal keep the faith five clean treats come on you Arsenal come on boys, oh, boys. I've got to find a stop recording again I I don't know where it is <laughs> alright boys uh, bottom, take, bottom right bottom right he's, he's done the update again there it is stop recording cheers boys take care <laughs> take care mate